lovely Saturday, the 17th of August, 2024. A very warm welcome to Zanis Evening News Bulletin. We are broadcasting to you from Mass Media Complex in Lusaka. I am your presenter, Nambula Mwangala, and my sign language interpreter is Joas Shikombwe. Let's look at the top stories making headlines. President Hichilema reaffirms Zambia's commitment to peace and stability. Chinese investors urged to familiarize themselves with labor laws. Home Affairs Minister urges public to protect infrastructure. And Lusaka Province Minister mourns a former First Lady Maureen Mwanawasa. And now the news in details. President Hakainde Hichilema has reaffirmed Zambia's commitment to supporting peace and stability in the Southern African Development Community, SADC region. President Hichilema, who is SADC chairperson on politics, defense and security cooperation, said this in his opening remarks during the official opening of the ordinary SADC Troika summit being held in Harare, Zimbabwe. In his virtual address, President Hichilema encouraged the gathering to continue to continue ensuring that global peace and security is maintained as well as working at dependent democracy in the countries. Chilika Chabalengula gives us more in this report. President Hainde Hichilema yesterday virtually opened the ordinary Troika summit as the chairperson for the Southern African Development Community, SADC organ on politics, defense, and security. The president emphasized on the need to continue working at realizing peace and stability in the region. A lot of work to be done in the difficult areas within our member states. Executive Secretary has covered this already, and we want to encourage all of us to continue doing the good work that is necessary to keep our peace, security, and stability in our countries in our region, on our continent, and to contribute to global peace, security, and stability in that order. I must also indicate that um, it is important that we continue deepening our democracies in our countries. As the Executive Secretary said, elections are almost, if you like, the ultimate in our democratic dispensations. And elections can be difficult, elections can be emotional, but we're very pleased that uh, the elections that happened during our time or the year that has passed were uh, reasonably peaceful and delivered leaderships that SADC now can be proud uh, as, a, as a bloc that uh, we have maintained or managed to have a peaceful transition of leaderships from one team to another during the last year. In his closing address as the outgoing chairperson, he acknowledged support during his tenure and assured the incoming chairperson, Tanzanian President Dr. Samia Suluhu Hassan, of Zambia's support. It will be remiss of my part, on my part, not to acknowledge the tremendous support and cooperation from colleagues in the organ, you the colleagues in the organ troika during the year. I take this opportunity to reaffirm the government of Zambia's full confidence in the United Republic of Tanzania under your leadership, my dear Sister President, that you will discharge your duties, our collective duties, over all around this organ in a splendid manner. I wish to assure my Tanzanian counterpart, Sister Colleague President, that the Republic of Zambia remains ready to support you and your teams and the broader troika, you know, uh, in the conduct of our business, but through you as chair. And I'm confident that you will continue to steer the organ to greater heights. Meanwhile, SADC Executive Secretary Elias Magosi appreciated Mr. Hijilema for his leadership and assured Dr. Samia Sulu Hassan of Secretary Support. As the chair of his Excellency, Mr. Chairperson of uh, the Organ of Politics, Defense, and Security Corporation is coming to an end. Let me take this opportunity to express our gratitude and appreciation for the exemplary leadership he has provided over the past year. 
I am confident that the foundation we have built under uh, his leadership will continue to guide us in our pursuit of peace, security, and prosperity for all. To the incoming chairperson of the Organ on Politics, Defense, and Security Corporation, Her Excellency Dr. Samia Sulu Hassan, I wish to assure you, Excellency, of the Secretariat's support to ensure that your tenure is equally successful. I am confident that under your stewardship, the organ will remain vigilant against the threats to peace and security and takes collective measures to address these emerging challenges facing our region. Today, SADC holds the 44th Ordinary Summit of SADC Heads of State and Government in Harare, Zimbabwe, under the theme, Promoting Innovation to Unlock Opportunities for Sustained Economic Growth and Development Towards an Industrialized SADC. Shilika Chabalingula Fozanis in Lusaka. And President Hakainde Hichilema has assured the people of Lapula province of tangible development in various sectors. President Hichilema cited aquaculture, mining and agriculture as some of the sectors that need investment. Speaking on arrival at Chienge Airstrip before proceeding to grace the Wilile traditional ceremony for the Wile people, the head of state observed that the province is blessed in terms of natural resources which, if well harnessed, can help develop the area. More in the following reports by Kennedy Chomba. Republican President Haka Indeichidema is in Wapla province to grace this year's Wilile traditional ceremony of senior chief putter of Chienge district. Speaking on arrival, the president emphasized the need for Wapla province to be a leading fish producer across the country. The president observed that with so many water bodies in the province, there is no reason why the province should lag behind in aquaculture. The head of state has since directed means of fisheries and livestock and Wapla province minister to undertake an aerial survey of the province to ascertain how developmental programs will be implemented in the province. You know, really, my love for the people of the country was expanding by the day, by the hour. Because this place, when the helicopters come, maybe we do two helicopters. I've added one more, eh? Two helicopters. I don't call I want a provincial minister. The minister, livestock here. Livestock, yeah. Huh? Agriculture. Agriculture. And water. You take a week here. We go around, because helicopter, put more land anywhere. More land van too. Then we agree a solid program of what we can do here. This place is a rich place. This president of yours, this body of yours, will make sure that we change this country for the better. Chiengi, Chelenge, Masabombe, Kashibishi, Wangu, Wangu. We can put fish cages here. In a short period of time, this government will provide the money and we put fish cages so that our neswava, bale regrava na kuya pa fishing pa muma na zero five, our na vafiba vaya muma school because of free education. But we can put fish cages there. And Minister of Livestock and Fisheries says government will do everything possible to improve the livestock and fisheries sectors in Wapla Province. Mm. The president is in Chengi district to grace the Wirile traditional ceremony of the Wirile people of senior chief Puta. Kenne Chomba reporting for the news in Chengi district. 
Meanwhile, President Haka Indehichilema says national unity is the key ingredient for the country to realize meaningful social and economic development and must be harnessed. Mr. Hichilema also says his administration is committed to working with traditional leaders in its agenda to develop the country and transform the lives of citizens. Speaking when he graced the Wilile traditional ceremony in Chienga district of Lapula province today, Mr. Hichilema reaffirmed the importance of unity and One Zambia, One Nation motto. In other news, Minister of Labor and Social Security Brenda Tambatamba has called on the Chinese Chamber of Commerce in Zambia to sensitize its members on the need to observe Zambian labor laws. Ms. Tambatamba notes that upholding labor laws by the business community will help reduce misunderstanding and enhance cordial relations with the Chinese investors and the workers. The minister said this in a speech read on her behalf by Labor and Social Security Acting Permanent Secretary Zakaria Luhanga during a workshop for the Chinese Chamber of Commerce in Zambia. Ms. Tambatamba added that government recognizes the role that the private sector plays in creating jobs and driving the country's economic growth. In a southern province, Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security Jack Mwimbo has advised residents of Ufenuka Ward in Monza district to desist from taking the law in their hands by killing people suspected to be practicing witchcraft. Speaking when he inspected construction works at Chikuni Police Post, which is under rehabilitation after being damaged by riots in community in 2022, Mr. Mwimbo urged the community to safeguard public infrastructure. More in the following reports. Monza District Zewufuenuka Ward has long been grappling with high levels of crime, particularly stock theft and the brutal killings of individuals suspected of witchcraft. The situation worsened after the original police post in Chikuni was destroyed during riots, leaving the community vulnerable to more criminal activities. However, the government is now constructing a new Chikuni police post with works nearing completion. Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, who is also Monza Central Member of Parliament, Mr. Jack Mwimbo, has visited the Chikuni police post to inspect the ongoing construction works. We made a commitment as government that we shall ensure that uh, we build a new police post here. I'm glad to inform the nation and in particular the people of uh, Fenuka Ward and in particular Chikuni that the police post is almost completed. I'm assured by the officers who are working here that once the remaining items are brought in, this police post can be made and be opened before the 24th of October 2024. Ufanuka Ward Councillor Lewis Luguvi has highlighted the critical need for this police post. We've been having a lot of challenges over criminal activities that have been in this area. So the coming one of this police post will really help the chief dome. While visiting Chikuni, Mr. Mwimbu also issued a stern warning against the killings of innocent people suspected of witchcraft. The minister wants the community to focus on positive initiatives that can be supported through CDF. <laughs> Chintunangamba, Fosanis, in Monza District, Southern Province. We take our first break. Coming up is education segment plus more stories. Stay tuned. The issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch the issue every Friday at 1930 hours, only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. 
Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on the News TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT, and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Welcome back on our education segment. 704 students from across the country have taken part in this year's Junior Engineers, Technicians and Scientism Jets Fair yelled at Lusaka's National Science Center. Our staff at Ceramiti covered the event and filed this report. From across the country, creative, innovative and talented young people have come together at this year's National Jets Fair, showcasing their innovations. Age has not restricted this five-year-old girl from rural Shangombo who is making crayons from chalk because her parents could not afford to buy crayons for her and earned herself the Minister's Award in the Early Childhood category. I feel like I'm making crayons. It's to use candle and and colored chalk and they put tea and fire. After using that, you get candle, you break, you break, you put in the pot, and you put on the fire, and the candle to melt. After melting, you put color jug, and you mix some a bit. And you put on the plain paper, and you start coloring. Another student from Meheba refugee camp is able to reconstruct damaged phones, a skill he acquired as a result of his parents' inability to afford a phone. I think that I just go in the market, seeing those people who are there, they started giving me ideas how to do these things. Then also me, I made my own station and I started preparing phones. After preparing these things, um, I'm able to have my own money and afford what I want in everything what I need. Minister in charge of education, Douglas Siakalima, took time to explore some of the innovations and was amazed at the ingenuity of the young people. Also impressed by the ingenuity of the young people was Technology and Science Minister Felix Mutati, who directed for the 6 million Quacha Innovations Fund to be channeled towards JETS. These brilliant innovations need to be protected against copyright infringement, and the patent and company registration agency PACRA have also come on board to support and help protect the innovations. You may want to know why, uh, what's the interest that PACRA has in the JETS National Fund. You may wish to know that um, as part of our mandate, uh, PACRA aims at promoting innovation and creativity through the protection of our intellectual property and rights. And that is where we come in. We realize that uh, there are a lot of innovations that uh, come out from the national jet sphere. And we are here to identify those innovations and see how best we can uh, help safeguard these uh, innovations by giving free registration services uh, for patents. So that's what we'll be doing at this National Jets Fair. We will be awarding, you may wish to know, 15 inventors. Those that uh, we feel have the potential for commercializations will be given free registration services and then later on also will be able to, to, to give some form of monetary uh, rewards just to incentivize and encourage the pupils from this different parts of the country to continue to create, to innovate uh, for, um, uh, in order to find solutions for problems that uh, we are facing as a country. Various stakeholders have come on board to sponsor this very important event, including long-time sponsors JICA, Crucible Lusaka College, who are offering A-level sponsorship to outstanding students, the Zambia Army, the Engineering Institute of Zambia, and universities and colleges. Sarah Miti reporting for Zanis in Lusaka. Meanwhile, in southern province, over 160,000 pupils who were out of school owing to lack of funds have returned to school since the introduction of the free education policy. Provincial Education Officer Oliver Kambuli said this in an interview with Zanis in Choma District. Here is a report by Chimunya Nalumpa. Unlocking barriers to education for the poor and less privileged children in the country is one of the key achievements of the UPND government. When the party took office three years ago, the implementation of the free education policy became a priority. 
in southern province, over 160,000 children have returned to school. If you check enrollment trends in southern province, you realize that in 2021, we had 608,778. So because of free education, you realize that 160,568 learners are back in school which has increased enrollment from 608,778 learners. To today, the current figure as per July 30th, it was 769,346. This increase in enrollment is backed by massive school infrastructure development, provision of desks, including learning and teaching materials. The classroom space we are doing, the desk we are doing, recruitment of teachers. Above all, government has sent a lot of books. Not only that, when you're talking about free education, you're saying these children are not paying. The government is giving grants. For Youth Development Organization Executive Director Patnasi Abutuba, the UPND government's support to the education sector is a game changer. The provision of free education did not just come because it was in the party's manifesto. Free education was achieved because the economy was performing and we were able to generate resources that would then pay for every child in school from grade 1 to grade 12 because the economy was productive and we were able to generate resources. So provision of free education is a huge success that the APNT scored. Parents from the outskirts of Choma are grateful for the free education policy. <laughs> Nchimunyana Lumpa, Zanis, Inchoma, Southern Province. And in Northern Province, Kasama's Central Member of Parliament, Siwongile Mwamba, has appealed to governments to consider constructing more boarding schools to promote the education of the girl child. Ms. Mwamba says the move will also help with the successful implementation of the Keeping Girls in School KGS program. Speaking in an interview with Zanis in Kasama after checking on selected constituency development funds as CDF projects, Ms. Mwamba observed that the development has also contributed to some parents resorting to marrying off their girl children. Government to look into having more boarding schools in um, Kasama Central constituency because that will aid um, with the keeping girls in school facility. If you look at some of the distances that um, our learners have to walk, the distances are very far. Yes, we have um, schools dotted around and um, some of the schools do not go up to secondary school. So the walking distances are very far and hence you find that um, certain parents would rather marry off their kids than keeping them in school. Even those that have made a mistake of having early pregnancies, it is important that they're given the opportunity to go back to school. So I wish to urge um, the parents, I wish to urge the girl child, and I also wish to urge the boy child that it is important to be um, a society that is educated because education is key and it will help in many decisions that we have because um, it will also allow for, for the community to be well informed in anything that is going on. So girls, please, if you're out of school, please, I encourage you to enroll. It is not too late. And also, even the, 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 those mothers that have children at a tender age, this is the time. With free education, please feel free <coughs> to enroll. It is open to everybody so that we have an educated society. We continue with the news. Government has reiterated its commitment to ensuring that children, especially girls, are protected from all forms of abuse and are able to thrive and reach their full potential. Ministry of Community Development Permanent Secretary Angela Kawandami says the government has been working with supporting partners such as Mothers Beyond Borders in enhancing the girl child's well-being. Audrey Kalenga has the details. For the past four years, Mothers Beyond Borders, an organization that provides orphaned girls with care, education and essential support services, 
to ensure their safety and well-being has been implementing the Be That Girl program. The program is meant to provide education and mentorship support to girls as a way of keeping them from early marriages and teenage pregnancies. The institution has been working with the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services to identify and support vulnerable girls from Chongwe, Chilanga, Ngawe, among other districts, with educational needs from tertiary to secondary school. The mentorship program or the Be That Girl program is in different areas. We are coming from Ngawe, from Chongwe, from Chilanga, from Lusaka, and from um, Chibombo area. We have a number of almost 459 participants on this program, and these are all the girls that are here. And then from this number, we have 360 that are in secondary school, and then we have 115 children that are in tertiary education. Officiating at this year's fourth annual conference, Minister of Community Development and Social Services Permanent Secretary Angela Kawandami was represented by Director, Principal Child Development, Fidelis Simboma. I want to assure you that the government is doing everything possible to address the challenges the girls face today. And this fight calls for active involvement of all stakeholders. I commend and appreciate the role that Mothers Without Borders is playing as a partner to government in ensuring that the voices of the girls are heard and nurtured. May this continue for the foreseeable the event was not short of entertainment. Mothers Beyond Borders Country Director Josephine Daka further gave an insight on what her organization is doing to empower vulnerable girls. And Mothers Without Borders is the organization that is implementing a program called Be That Girl. So this program um, is a mentorship program where we have uh, girls uh, receiving mentorship with regards to walking the path of a girl child coming from a vulnerable background in a developing country. This year's Be That Girl conference was being held under the theme Arise, Brave and Bored. Audrey Kalinga. In Eastern Province, Chipata City Mayor George Mwanza has applauded Smiling Kids Zambia for its relentless support towards uplifting the livelihood of the vulnerable children by investing in their future. Speaking at the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the organization, Mr. Mwanza said over 5,000 vulnerable children have been supported through various activities. More in this report. It was a jovial day for smiling kids of Chipata City as they marched through the city centre to David Kaunda Stadium to celebrate their 20 years of existence under the theme providing unwavering support to humanity. Chipata City Mayor was present at the event and urged parents and guardians to take responsibility of the vulnerable children as the African culture demands. 20 years, smiling kids has been providing support to humanity, really. Uh, you have been able to support more than 5,000 people that have benefited from Smiling Kids' various initiatives, drama, football, and various other aspects, including those that have passed through your transit home, really, that didn't have where to stay, but you were able to facilitate their stay for a period when they were not able to find any form of support and uh, defense. Over Fana Makolovana Okomaotaiwa. You know they are literally abandoned. Uh, but you know we are in Africa and we have a strong extended family and love for one another. So to the parents uh, in our society, I'm encouraging you to continue to extend love. Don't abandon children. Janjere is mining kids, Zambia coordinator. We have provided education support to children from primary to tertiary level. Currently, the organization is supporting 10 children in various colleges and universities. We thank the government for introducing the free education policy, which has in some way 
reduced our burden, especially to those of our pupils who are in primary and secondary schools. Smiling Kids Zambia has also taken steps to develop sports and skills. It is worth mentioning that in line with our mandate of providing recreation activities to the vulnerable, Smiling Kids has six football teams. And these are some of the Smiling Kids legends. I was given a loan full time, 100%. But now I can be proud to say I'm a teacher. I'm a smiling teacher. Smiling teacher. From smiling kids to smiling teacher. The organization has made sure that the children are well disciplined, no use of drugs, no early pregnancies, because they are always there to protect a child. Because of this, smiling kids have produced teachers, nurses, and many other professions which have added value to the human resource of this country. Jingswayo Billy, reporting for Zanis in Chipata, Eastern Province. Let's take our second and last break. Stay tuned. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on Zanis TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT, and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk, sharing real life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours on the Topster Channel, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. agriculture news, Mazabuka District Commissioner Oliver Mulomba says government through the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, will open more maize depots in strategic points before the onset of the rain season. Mr. Mulomba said this when he toured Nkonkola maize shade in Magoya constituency. Kazela Habwanda has more in the following reports. In order to cut on long distances covered when accessing maize from depots, Government has considered opening more depots in strategic points, and Konkola Depot in Magoy constituency is one of them. Mazabka District Commissioner Oliver Mulomba toured the shed and found it fully stocked with maize, readily available for sale. Yes, Konkola is one of the 10 depots which have been opened to, for people to access the community sales and also the relief food. And for sure, we are happy that. The stocks are here at Nkonkola Depot. This is what the government stands for, to ensure that the stocks are taken closer to the people. This is what your president, the president of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Haginde Hichirema, stands for. We don't want people to be moving long distances to go and access the maze. However, as we get closer to rain season, the district commissioner wants more depots taken closer to communities. We shall see to it that as we get into rain season, if it means opening more areas or points going down up to Namaira, we just have to do that one. Because there's no way people can be running to come and get the maize from here in Konkola to Namaira. It's quite some distance. The locals are happy to buy the commodity closer to their doorsteps. <laughs> Government through FRA is selling a bag of 50 kg maize at a cost affordable enough to work as a solution to a current crisis. Kazela Yabwanda, Zanis, Mazapka District. 
The Scottish government, working with the Green Living Movement organization, has empowered communities in Sinazongwe district of southern province with climate change resilient interventions to support their livelihoods. Pride Walia has the details in the following reports. Climate change impacts such as drought and high temperatures have adversely affected lives of both people and animals in Chande village of Chiaviwad in Sinazongwe district. The situation has resulted in hunger and scarcity of water for many households in the area. Green Living Movement, GLOM, with funding from the Scottish Government, has responded by supporting the communities with climate adaptation interventions under the project dubbed Climate Just Communities, CJC. Firstly, we have activities that are in the agricultural sector, the integrated agriculture, and for those integrated agriculture, our areas of work is crops and livestock. So we are here basically, and I can see a bit of greens coming up there. So I know now that uh, things are happening. After, apart from agriculture, we are also developing the business, business development. Listen to NGOs, listen to advocacy partners, and just understand exactly what the impact is going to be on the economy. One of the key, you know, we really thank you for being so supportive of the project. We, you know, we understand that um, there are many different partners working together to make that a success. This development has elated both the government and traditional leadership in Sinazongwe district. Very grateful. And all I'm asking is that I know maybe you've got a period of uh, running this uh, program in the district. district please. With the issue of climate change, you've seen how it is. But what you are doing is in line with the challenges we are facing now. That looked at like that, but you put much of your concern to come and uh, mitigate the challenges that we have in the district. Interventions such as the enhancement of food security through sustainable wetland farming are already being implemented and increased access to water and tapping irrigation is yet to be provided by the organization. LGM and Tomwe, our government, to be and Tomwe, who took what mapped you to be Kemans, otherwise to remove to Lumbid. Pride Warrior reporting in Snazongo District, Southern Province. In northwestern province, Soloisi Municipal Council town clerk Stanley Mbewe says over 30 kilometers of township roads will be upgraded to bituminous standard at a cost of 200 million kwacha under the Memorandum of Understanding MOU signed with Kansanshi Mining PLC. More in the following report by Jennifer Mutoshi. As the 2024 construction and upgrading of the 1.65 kilometers of Soloisi Township Road to be a standard by the local authority. The project is a continuation of the MOU that the council has with Kansanshi Mine to retain some of its property rates and channel it to local development. With a total amount of 200 million kwacha to be spent this year, Chisomo Kimasala Road is the first to be worked on. On this year, we have signed an MOU of 31.65 kilometers of roadworks to be done and, and, and completed. So the first road that we have launched, uh, if you saw earlier on where we began from, is the Chisomo Kimasara Road. This road will proceed up to Muzabula. The town clerk highlights other roads to be upgraded. We have the stadium road passing through up to Kawiko. Uh, we have the, uh, the Magred Road, starting from your militias, getting into Magret, crossing over. We know we recently built a new bridge which is cut, cutting across the river. So that road which is coming up to uh, the golf club. So we will have a road that you, you can come in from here without passing through town, but be able to reach Magret. Meanwhile, the development has cheered the Kimasala residents. And then business, 
Reporting for the news news in Solwezi district, Genfa Toshi. Lastly, on our news this evening, Lusaka Province Minister Sheo Muliata says late former First Lady Maureen Monawasa will be greatly missed. Ms. Muliata said this in a message when she signed in the book of condolences at the residence of the late former First Lady in Lusaka's Roma Park. Mutalekani now reports. Zambians have continued to mourn late former First Lady Maureen Monawasa. Ever since news of her untimely passing broke out, messages of condolence have been pouring in. Lusaka Province Minister Shiomudiata visited the residence of the late former First Lady in Lusaka's Roma Park area to mourn with family and friends. The Lusaka Province Minister paid tribute to Mrs. Monawasa through a message she wrote in the Book of Condolence. The message read, quote, Condolences to the entire Monawasa family. We mourn with you during this very painful time. May her soul rest in peace. She will be greatly missed. End quote. Mrs. Monawasa passed away after an illness at Lusaka's Minasoko Hospital on Tuesday, August 13, 2024. The late former First Lady will be put to rest on Monday, August 19, 2024, which will coincide with her husband, late President Levi Monawasa's Memorial Day. President Haka Inde Hitchilema has since declared August 19 as a day of national mourning in honor of the late former First Lady. Mtalekani for Zanis News in Lusaka. On that note, we come to the end of our evening news bulletin. But before we say goodbye, let's have a recap of the top stories once again. President Hichilema reaffirms Zambia's commitment to peace and stability. Chinese investors urge to familiarize themselves with labor laws. Home Affairs Minister urges public to protect infrastructure and Lusaka Province Minister mourns a former First Lady, Maureen Wanawasa. On behalf of my sign language interpreter, Joas Shikombwe, and the entire news production crew, my name is Nambula Mwangala. Thank you for watching.